All right, so I'm still here. Oh, wait, I keep looking over there. I'm used to my camera being over there, but my thumb is holding the phone, so I had to switch my camera to up there. I'm Jennifer. Jean. And this is my journey to better health, to mobility, to weight loss. My finally, my journey to weight loss after trying for, trying and then not trying for, I don't know how many years on my channel. Um, but we'll get into that in a little bit. So today is Thursday, September 23rd. It's been 39 days now that we have been here. Jennifer has been here. Yes. I have, I have been here every single day with Jennifer, um, anywhere between, well, mostly about 10 hours a day. Yeah. But I think I've only had a few days where I'd stay for about five or six hours. Yeah. He's been a real trooper. He's done more for me. I'm going to start to cry. That's not a good way to start uh, start out a video is me bawling. She's um, been a trooper. Going through all this with the grace that she has, I've seen an inner strength in Jennifer I've never seen before. But, like, I told him, what choice do I have? I'm like, I just don't care. But it's the way your, your attitude is, your handling it, your emotional stability. I mean, it's pretty impressive. Your patience is amazing. Yeah. I'm trying. Um, but I appreciate everything that Gene has done for me. He has done more for me than I, anybody would. And he's what above and beyond and I appreciate that so much um before we start anything about me telling you how I'm doing what's going on um I want to first say a big huge giant enormous thank you to Marcine and Joyce for their generosity and their kindness they have went above and beyond as well and we i would not have been able to be here with jennifer's in helping out as much as uh i have been every single day without y'all's help so absolutely hands down thank you guys so much i mean from heart to heart it is the only way that uh we have been able to get through this so yes and i have had um a few other people email me and message me asking if they can help me in any way. Um, and I don't want anyone to feel that they are required to help me. But for those who have reached out and asked if you would like to make a donation to PayPal, the link is in my bio. Um, like I said, please don't feel that I, you know, that you need to do so. Um, it's just for those who have asked and um, I am not really putting anything on a wish list because I don't know right now what I'm going to need um, sorry my arm's getting tired what I'm going to need for um, a home for rehab for beyond so that's why I haven't added anything to the wish list so Thank you all so much for your prayers, uh, for everything. It means a lot to both of us. I rest my arm. All right, I know this is a really awkward position. Um, that's all we got. That's all I got. I don't have a tripod. I didn't bring the tripod, which uh, turns into a selfie stick. But. Yeah. And I'm laying down, and he's sitting behind me, and... That's just the way it is. Um, so. In the hospital. Yeah. Uh, there's a. Next time I'll set up the green screen. There's actually a couch back there where Jean has taken quite a few little nappy nappies. I was trying to put my finger under your nose like a little mustache. Mm. Uh -huh. <laughs> um. So, okay, let me go back to my first update video. I came into the ER on 
September the... August. Oh, yeah, that's August right. the 15th. August the 15th. And um, we've just cleared 39 days. Uh, I had MRSA. I have a septic. And I've had two UTIs since I've been here. And I'm still dealing with some abdominal bowel issues still. And Hold on, my arms. I'm... Can you reach around and hold it? Because my arm is getting... Oh, no. Let me see if I can set it on something. Jeez. Uh... Go. Really not sure how. Oh, wait. No, let's take it to the next level here. Here we go. Much better. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Are we still recording? Yeah. Yeah, we had to change the position of the camera. This is a little better here, so she didn't have to hold up the phone. Right. Um, okay, so came in on August the 15th. Um, I just went through all that. So um, I was going to be released after two weeks. A week and a half, two weeks. Then I had been in bed so long For those two weeks, I hadn't been out of bed at all, and I had become so weak that I could not even sit up on my own, Um, and which is extremely scary. It's scary enough to, um, where am I my camera? It's over here. Okay. Uh, it's scary enough when I have the knowledge that I can't walk freely like other people do um but that's all self-inflicted I mean I know I've done all this to myself so I'm not complaining too much but being in the hospital such a short time I had no idea I would lose my mobility so quickly it took three days for not getting up to lose it yeah um and I think too some weakness was caused by her body fighting a severe infection. So it all just kind of compounded to where, you know, kind of a snowball effect or the compounding of the two where she couldn't get up. Hang on, how tall are you? Five, eight. Okay. Yeah, where she couldn't get up for quite some time and then uh, PT's been working with her. Pretty good, kind of a hit and miss. Uh, today was, I think today was a, I hit a milestone yeah, for very me. Very successful. I was able to sit up on my own without assistance. And pretty easy at that. Yeah. <coughs> um, it may easy, not. Easier at, than the house, actually. Yeah. yeah, true. It may not sound like, you know, a lot for some people, but for me, it was a lot. And my other piece of good news, um, I have a huge piece of good news. And I was excited, very excited to find this out. So, so big of, of, of news that it, it, it weighs about 80 pounds. <laughs> um, so when I came into the hospital, I weighed 657, which was unbelievable because at home, my scale was saying 621 at the highest. So I was off a bit, my scale was, um, because it's very accurate here. Uh, the bed has a scale on it, so before you, that you get in it, they zero it out and they weigh you. Um, so, they uh, were trying to, trying to get me used to using a Hoyer. Um, there's tracking in the ceiling, and we'll show you. 
We'll, we'll take a video of it and then you can insert that right. when you do your little editing. Okay, thing. just go ahead and explain it then. Yeah. So there's chalking in the ceiling. I waited a long time to be able to be transferred to a bariatric room because there's very few rooms in the hospital that are equipped for bariatric patients. And so finally the first room that they put me in, it was a bariatric room, but the lift didn't work. So then they transferred me to this room and it worked. So what it is is there's tracking in the ceiling and then a bar comes down and then you lay on a mat and it has these, oops, these kind of hooks on them. And then they attach the hooks to the bar in the ceiling and it lifts you up. I was extremely nervous, and I still am because I don't like it at all. It's a weird feeling um, about it not being able to lift me. It can lift up to 770 pounds, and the mat can lift up to 1,000 pounds. Um, so they kept assuring me that I was fine and everything was going to be fine. And I believe them. It's just my own fears that it's a really weird feeling being hoisted above you know, suspended from the air. It reminds me, I know somebody's gonna say it, so I'm just gonna say it because it reminds me of it, of a beached whale you see on the news on like Animal Planet when a whale gets caught on the beach and they have to like put that big sling under them and hoist them up to get them back in the ocean. That's pretty much what I feel like when I'm in the Hoyer. Um, anyhow, so back to my story, my exciting story. Um, two days ago, they had me up and they zeroed out the bed and they weighed me again. And I now weigh, drum roll please, <laughs> 577 pounds. So I've lost a total of 80 pounds since I've been here. Um, Jean has been able to see a difference in my stomach shrinking. Uh, just for one point in reference, my bracelet from when I came in, this didn't come off when I came in, but it's, it's now coming off. She can't wear her ring, so I had to take it back home. Yeah, I can't wear my engagement ring. It keeps sliding off. Um, and I, I can feel when I, when I do sit up, I don't feel as weighted down because that's what was hurting when I first tried to sit up when I first came in. It felt like my stomach, my stomach never really felt like I weighed 600 pounds. But when I tried to sit up, it definitely felt like 600 pounds, like my stomach was not moving. Um, so it feels a lot later now and I'm very encouraged by it. Um, I was thinking, well, I'm kind of forced to lose weight because I can't have blah, 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 blah. But the fact of the matter is, um, the first two weeks I was on a carb control diet, but then they moved me to a non-restricted diet. So I could order, I can order anything off the menu. Um, I can have Jean go down to the cafeteria and get me whatever. I could order DoorDash or whatever I want. Tortoise. You can. You yeah, can order DoorDash. So. Um, so, I guess in a way, I have to give myself, I'm going to give myself some credit too, because I have been making healthier choices. One big change in me, um, when I came in, they did find out I was diabetic, and I have been on insulin. Thankfully, most of the time now, um, my my numbers are controlled by my diet, and I don't have to get shots that often. Uh, when I do go home, I will be on metformin and, do you remember the name of that other medicine? No. There's two medicines they're gonna put me on for um, the diabetes. It's metformin and another, it starts with a U, I think. Yeah, I don't know. It's the first time I heard it. I'm yeah. familiar with metformin, but I don't know the other. Um, so that's, you know, um, one of the things I think has contributed to me 
I think, I don't know, I think uncontrolled blood sugar makes you hungry. Maybe? I don't know, I but don't know. since I've been in here, I have totally lost my appetite for sweet stuff. Um, Gene has gotten a piece of cake or something from the cafeteria. Like the other day, he got a chocolate chip pie, a piece of chocolate chip pie. And I was like, oh, I, like the dietitian told me, there's nothing that I can't have, but I just have to fit it into my carbs and fit it into my calories to make it work for me. So I was like, I'll just take a couple bites of that for something sweet. Because in my mind, I think, oh, something sweet would taste good. But then when I tasted it, it was way too sweet. I can't eat sweets at hardly at all anymore. And that kind of, I know I'm kind of grateful for that. There's a big part of me that is happy about it, but there's also a big part of me that is bummed about it because that was my comfort thing. Um, I'm not very hungry anymore. I usually eat one, like, normal-sized meal and then one, like, snacky kind of meal, and then I'll have, like, just liquid for breakfast usually. Um, well, you're propped up against it. They prescribe me in shore protein drinks uh, for when I don't eat a lot. Um, so then for, like, I'll have, when Jean comes, we'll have whatever is in the cafeteria because I'm so tired of ordering off of the menu. Um, so he'll go down and see what they have in the cafeteria. And, like, today I had, they had spaghetti and meatballs, and I didn't want to put my carbs into spaghetti because that's, way too high in carbs so I just had plain meatballs and I think that's all I had because I wasn't very hungry I might order a salad here in a little bit and have a salad and then for dinner I'll probably have I hope they have again Jean had gotten me one time it, it came in a little cup from downstairs and it had cube cheese pepperoni and olives and that's perfect for me to have in the evening because I'm not usually not hungry at all um of course i've been drinking a ton of water um so i'm very happy with the direction my weight loss is going i'm very hopeful that it will continue um i'm i'm going to do all that i can to make it continue um let's see what else do i have to update you think of anything? The doctors and the nurses have all been so kind and so nice and caring. I've had a couple of nurses who are on a different, the other floor when I was moved down here. They stopped to see how I was. And I appreciate them so much. They're very sweet people. Um, so along with my diabetes, when I came in, um, I've been having a hard time sleeping, and I've been dealing with a lot of anxiety because I'm out of my comfort zone. Excuse me. I'm out of my comfort zone. Um, at home, I was prescribed Visteril to take for my panic attacks, which I had, um, I've had a prescription for that for years, but I very rarely have to take it because I'm not usually panicked because I'm in my environment and I'm in my safe zone and I don't really leave it. But here it's a whole new environment, being by myself, being when Jean's not here, like when visiting hours are over, it's just a whole different ball game here. Especially being here for so long. Yeah. When I was in the hospital <clears throat> a couple of years ago when I first came up here, I made a video about it, about losing blood. And I had a blood transplant. I was here for three days. Those three days felt like a week. So I can't imagine what 40 days would feel like to someone. How, how long does it feel like you've been in here? It feels like months. Yeah, because we're, we're nearing six weeks. That's a month and a half. That's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot of time spent staring at the wall or at a window. We've been in two different rooms, or I mean three different rooms, moved twice. So two of the, two of the rooms, she had a good view. She lays on the side. And she sits, you know, and she's looking out the window now, just so happens the way the room's designed. She's staring at 
the, the wall. The door, so, yeah. Uh, been look, been here for now how long? In this room? Uh, about a week? Week, week and a half, <clears> I think. <throat> yeah. It's a long time to stare at a wall, so I got her some flowers uh, to look at. Beautiful and, flowers uh, and blooms and yeah. a teddy bear. Um, Hold on, excuse me. Um, staring at the wall. So, right. yeah, staring at the wall has been very difficult. Uh, oh, and then being in this room, I have the data on my phone doesn't work very well. And the Wi-Fi here doesn't work. For me, at least, it doesn't work. Uh, so, I've been trying to watch videos, but they start and stop, start and stop. My podcast won't load. My music won't load. Uh, so it's kind of frustrating a little bit. Um, but, like, I try to remind myself there's a reason for everything. And if the reason that I have been put here for 40 days, 39 days, is because I need to lose weight, if that was the reason to kickstart it, to get me to realize that I was in severe denial about my problems, about my condition, then I'll take this. This is a cross to bear, I guess you could say. So yeah, this is, I was in complete denial about my problem, my issues, no matter who told me something that I needed to take it seriously before something bad happened. They were wrong, they didn't know what they were talking about, I had it under control. Obviously, y'all know, Everybody knew that I was full of beep, um, and I did not have it under control, and I'm working on getting it under control now. I'm working on my emotional issues, which is very difficult. Um, they put me on, I, they started me on melatonin because I've been having problems sleeping, but it really hasn't helped. Um, they put me on, back on Wellbutrin. I was on Wellbutrin a few years ago, and I didn't go back to the doctor, so I didn't get it refilled. So I just stopped taking it. And I have noticed um, a lot of improvement in my depression. I don't feel quite as depressed and hopeless as I did. Especially after hearing I lost 80 pounds, I feel more hopeful. Um, it's just boggles my mind that I am almost lost... Hello. Hello, honey. Just making a video. Huh? Just making a video. Oh, oh you're fine. <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> Barely up there. We don't have a tripod, so we're using <laughs> inshore. <laughs> okay. Don't worry. My normal? Your normal. Oh, good. All right, honey. Gonna live another few hours. Oh, no. How about a couple, <laughs> few more days? Yeah. <laughs> Long time from now. Yeah. Did you get your ham from Heavenly Ham? We sure did. What did you get? I got their chicken salad salads are so good. Oh, that sounds good. And it's just like a big, a big thing of shredded lettuce. Then they put tomatoes, onions, cheese and a big whopping thing of chicken salad right in the middle. Ooh, that and sounds it's good. delicious. It's so good. That sounds good. But see, I walk it off and now I'm starving. Yeah. So I'm going to go to Starbucks. No, walk through here. Oh. Uh, no, but usually I'll when I had it on my cell phone, uh -huh. I would put it on my I would put it in the back of my pocket or my scrub pocket before we were out wearing these t-shirts. Uh -huh. And I would be amazed how many steps I would take in a day. I bet. And I want to know how many gloves I go through in a day, too. <laughs> I always yeah. Know. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, I thought about the same thing with gloves. These glove companies got a good good oh, thing yeah. going. That, that, is the that and the hand sanitizer. And yeah. yeah. Yeah, that, have you ever had Heavenly Ham? 
Yeah. No. Oh, you guys have to try. You if you like like chicken salad or ham salad or turkey salad, uh -huh. everything is all fresh. Oh. So it's like fresh cut meat and everything. Uh -huh. It's good. What got in here? It's broke. <laughs> so. Yeah, well, that's good. Yeah. I mean, you get a meal for, if you get their meal box, you get a sandwich, chips, a dessert, a side, and a cookie. So you get a cookie, a side, a sandwich, and a drink for 10 bucks. That's not bad at uh, all. And their sandwiches are, like, real thick. They're wow. on, like, ciabatta bread. Oh, you yeah. You can pick your bread, and then... You just add, you know, your meat and then everything it comes with. And mm -hmm. their honey mustard is the best honey mustard I've ever oh, had. That sounds good. It's so good. It is so good. <laughs> All righty. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. I can't remember where I was. That was uh, vital check time. Um, so, oh, I got back on the Wellbutrin that I had been off of for a few years and I have noticed a big difference in my depression. I don't feel quite as depressed. They also put me on Boost Bar for anxiety and then I can still take my Visteril. Um, here they call it Atarax, but at home it's called Visteril. I haven't had the need to take a Visteril or Atarax for quite some time now. Uh, the Boost Bar with the Wellbutrin has really helped. I'm also taking Trazodone at night to help me relax and sleep. Although that's not really working either. Um, I guess it helps me relax, but it does hasn't really helped with sleep. Um, so those are like the core things that I've been taking care of since I came here. The, I've been losing weight. Uh, my diabetes is under control. When I go home, I'm, oh, I already told you that. When I go home, I'm going to be on pills instead of insulin. Um, I get two shots a day for, to help thin my blood so I don't get blood clots being in bed. Um, then my, like I said, my Wellbutrin, Boost Bar, Trazodone, Daily Vitamin. I think that's it. Oh, no, I also take a... Um, two probiotics a day. And, um, so yeah, everything is looking really positive, except I was supposed to go to rehab this week. Things fell through, and now we're back at square one, uh, looking for a place to go, because my insurance has, between my insurance and my weight, it was, they were having a hard time finding somewhere that would take me. Um, the nursing homes or the rehab facilities, they're like kind of one and the same because the nursing homes usually have a part of them that have rehab in them. They're so short staffed because this is what the doctor was saying. The, um, the senior staff, a lot of the senior staff took early retirements and last year when COVID started and then they just haven't been able to find and people to replace them. So there's a short this shortage of nurses and nursing teams and staff in the rehab facilities and the nursing homes. And they don't want me going to an actual just nursing home because that would be counterproductive because I wouldn't be getting any kind of help, uh, any kind of therapy. I would just be laying in bed. So they've been looking for places uh, and then the other part of, is it, of it is my insurance. There were a few places that would take me, but then there was a couple places that would not pay for my prescriptions. Um, so it's just been all a, a big juggling act, and I still don't know anything for sure. I guess I'll find out more next week and what's going on. So for right now, I'm here. She was set up to go to a, it looked hopeful, and we've been waiting for almost a week to go to this one place for physical therapy. And all of a sudden, uh, 24 hours before she was supposed to go, <clears throat> they denied her uh, from going.
they didn't accept her for whatever reason. So. And I don't understand why it took a week to tell me that. Yeah, for them to figure that out. Well, not yeah. tell me, but tell the social worker. Um, because we so were. It's, so it's looking like you may have to go home. Yeah. So the social worker is looking into, still looking into options, but also going to start working on getting equipment together for the house. And um, having like physical therapy, occupational therapy, nursing, um, home health nurses, and that type of thing come into the house. Um, we're still trying to figure out how that's going to work out with Jean having to go back to work eventually and me kind of being on my own. Um, At first, I don't see it working. Um, no. But eventually, yeah. I'll yeah, I mean, back. once. I, once you're better, up more mobile, that's a whole right. thing. I mean, as long as I can get back to even my plans and my goal, and I'm not going to settle for anything less, is to be able to walk. It's just plain walk. I told my physical therapist here that someday, not too far down the road, that I'm going to be able to walk back into the hospital and thank him for everything he's done for me. He is an amazing physical therapist. I cannot say enough good about him. He has been encouraging when I thought that, when I cried about not being able to do anything and feeling like a failure, he took the time to build me up and give me confidence and explain things to me. And he is just a wonderful person. Um, people, patients here are very blessed to have him. So that is my goal some days to be able to walk back into this hospital and thank him for what he's done for me. Um, so that is my ultimate goal is to be mobile, of course. Short term goal is to be just back to where I was before I came here, be able to get out of bed, take a few steps and get back into my chair because once I'm in my chair, I can fend for myself. Um, I can clean, cook, take care of the cats. Run me down again. Run them down again, run them over. Um, I can do whatever it is I need to do. So that's my short term goal. Um, I don't know what else to say. It's been a hell of a train ride. It really has. This has been the hardest thing I personally has ever have ever gone through. Uh, I think I can say that for Jennifer as well. Um, is this the hardest thing you've ever had to go through? Aside from losing my mom. Right. Yeah. Aside from, you know, loss. <clears throat> yeah, personal, yeah. Aside from losing my mom as well and dealing with the whole hospice issue, uh, this has been very, very rough and exhausting. And uh, there were times I, I didn't know if she was going to make it, quite honestly. I mean, she, she went, I don't know if it was hospital delirium or it's times when she'd just zone out. Zone out and not be very responsive. Of course, that's a big word for these people around here in the medical field. Don't say non responsive <laughs> or losing consciousness, but that's. All, the only way I can explain it, just <clears throat> um, not yeah. interacting very well. There were several times where they kept came running to the, my room because I was like there but not there. Like I was underwater and I couldn't, <clears throat> I can't explain it, but it was like I just couldn't <clears throat> make myself answer or interact. And they think it was because hospital delirium, I guess it's a real thing, and then partly because my blood sugar was dropping, it was going, getting normal for the first time in probably years, um, it was dropping into like the mid 100s, and my body wasn't used to it, so they had to back off on the insulin to let it slowly come down more, so that seems to have, I haven't had that in a while. And then there has been temperature spikes, uh, borderline fevers, a couple of times had a fever. That was going on during the uh, this delirium thing. Um, there, there was a, a, about three really rough weeks there in one extremely rough week. Um, but every week has been very rough in its own way. Um, and just not having Jennifer there. 
I don't have my baby at the house, you know? I, I'm lonely. It's just, it sucks looking over and seeing an empty bed. And Moo absolutely misses Jennifer because <laughs> he is all over me and I'm just, I'm just like, poor cat, you know? He's, he's never been so intimate with me. <laughs> <clears throat> of course. And I, I, try, I try to give him enough lovings, but then I have to save it for Jennifer, you know? I don't want to just take over the cat, so I'm like, all right, put the put the cat on the floor and be like, all right, that the rest is, is Jennifer's. That, that's Jennifer's job. <laughs> Luna. And of course, Luna. Luna she, she, she hadn't missed a beat. She doesn't care. She doesn't care that she I'm just, here. <laughs> she, she's I, like, oh, I think Jennifer's she, gone? Yay, I'm the lady of the house now. Uh -huh. I get all of daddy's attention. I can tell she's been more intimate with me, uh, uh. <laughs> Like, she's enjoying spending just us time together. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's something else. I, I miss her. Even though she's not a big fan of me, I still love her and miss her. Yeah, but the kitties are doing good. I'm, I'm doing my best to take care of them. I'll turn on the little faucet for them. Uh, of course, I stay on top of the basics, food, water, cat litter pan. And then, the, and then every night... I keep the little tradition thing going with that Jennifer has going on of taking care of her cats, and that's feeding them a little can of wet food every single night. Yes. I never grew up that way, you know. We always just fed our cats dry food and left it at that. But she likes to go the extra mile. So, yeah, I've been doing that. And he's been turning the faucet on so because Moo enjoys drinking out of the, the sink. Mm -hmm. So he does that for them. But... Everything is going, is looking up. I mean, it's just going to take some time. There's challenges ahead. Yeah, uh -huh. but nothing that I can't get through. I feel a lot more positive than I did when I was at home. I felt um, a big overwhelming sense of doom and negativity and like nothing was going to get better and uh, it was just over. But now I feel more positive. I feel more hopeful. And knowing that I lost 80 pounds in, what, five weeks has is very encouraging. And I look forward to the next time I get weighed. Um, my goal is, by the end of the year, to be under 500. I think that's very attainable, because I've got three months to do that. And, uh, you got anything else to add there, mister? Uh... I mean, we could tell a whole novel. We've got a novel to tell, but not really. I mean, without divulging everything you've gone through, but it's not really necessary. I guess not. All right. I'm t I think tomorrow I'm going to film What I Eat in a Day Hospital Edition to give you guys like a glimpse of what my food looks like while I'm in here, when I'm eating... Hospital edition. Hospital edition. Um, so, all right, I just thought I would update you guys. Thank you for all the well wishes, everyone who is concerned, the emails, the DMs, Marcine and Joyce. Thank you so, so much. Thank you, everyone. Um, I feel very loved and yeah, thank you guys very for your fortunate. Prayers. Thank you. All right, I will see you again soon. I hope everyone is doing well, and I hope you guys are enjoying fall. We're kicked into fall already. Um, that's what I'm, a big bummer that I'm not home to decorate for fall. But hopefully... It's starting to look like you're going to be home. Yeah, so... We'll decorate from the bed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Throw some leaves at the wall. There you go. All right, we'll see you guys later.